hey guys a uh, very good evening to all of you now there are two topics that i want to discuss with you the first topic obviously saw the title of the video how to cho uh, choose between your project and phd right so what is ben more beneficial to you that i'll i'm going to talk about and maybe in the next video i'm going to talk about whether integrated phd is good for you or just a pure masters is good for you and i got to know about these topics because i thought these topics are very trivial trivial and everybody would know about them but unfortunately i got to know that very well informed students also are not aware what to choose between a project or a phd or between a simple msc and an integrated phd like uh, this year's uh, jam rank one i uh, in chemistry he in fact contacted me to ask you know what is the difference like what should he choose between integrated phd and phd so from there i got the idea that this is not such a trivial topic and many students are in fact confused about it right so in this video i'm going to talk about how to differentiate or what is be 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 what is best for you right like whether it's a project or a phd and in what cases should you choose a project right so there are many cases in which you can choose a project phd is for those students i'll simplify it in two words those who talk about research all the time and those who are very curious about the subject the chemistry right whatever subject it may be it could be sub it could be chemistry physics mathematics whatever it is so if you want to pursue a phd you you need to be thinking about research all the time and you need to be very very curious so if, if you have these two ingredients then definitely and you're quite sure you want to pursue a phd then there's no doubt you can go ahead and do the phd but for those of you who are confused like there are many students who are confused you know maybe their financial condition is not good or they're not sure you know whether they should go for a job or they should go for a phd so for a lot of things lot of confusing things project uh, can solve a lot of problem problems right so let's talk about the pros of doing a project and in what case you should do a project right so the first thing that i've written confusion between a phd and job you're not sure whether you're meant for research or not right let's say some students are quite lucky in central universities or in iits who get some kind of experience uh, in research or maybe you get a summer internship in a very good research institute like jncsr or csr labs or iit labs right so you get a research exposure you get to know whether you are actually meant for research or not because theoretical um, doing a subject theoretically and doing a subject practically they are it's a totally different ball game right don't think that if you're good in theory your practical hand is also going to be good my practical hand sucks okay i'm not at all good with practicals right i try my best but i the, see you have you, there are some things that you need to accept i do not have a very good practical hand at all right i can't handle small things right i have difficulty in handling chemicals so i don't have a very good practical hand so you have to accept uh, whatever problems are there and then you have to see whether you can actually do it or not right so i'm trying my best even though i don't have a good practical hand but i'm trying my best to do research right then so again so if you have some kind of kind of confusion if you have not got some research exposure and you're not sure whether research is something for you or not then you can join a project now you might be thinking what is the project i'm talking about project and phd don't worry i'll talk about i'll discuss each and everything in the video right so um okay i'll just clear it up project is basically um so some professors not some in fact all professors they apply for uh, they have some project in their mind and they write their project and they apply to some funding agency some government agency which funds their projects so once they get the funding in that funding some amount is earmarked for students who would be working in that project who would be specifically working in that particular pro project right so basically they'll be doing the uh, the lab work or the bench work for that particular guide of for that particular professor so the professor then you know uh, uh, you know he just um, takes out an advertisement saying that i need two students on i need one student for a so and so project and he will be paying you the stipend which in most cases is at par with csir grf it is around 25000 per month and now it will uh, be 31000 excluding the hra hra is separate right sometimes you get the hra if you're not staying in the hostel and if you're staying in the hostel you don't get the hra right so right now it's 31000 right so generally you'll get at par that is around 31000 per month uh, if you enroll in a project that depends sometimes professors you know they give less money also so it depends on them right okay so uh, so that is the that is what a project is and it will help you choose whether you know you can do a one year project like generally after every one year it gets renewed generally projects last from 3 to 5 years so after every one year if the professor is satisfied with your performance which in usually most of the cases he or she is then uh, they will and they will you know they will uh, further uh, you know renew your contract for more years right so for initially it starts with one year 
so um you know so it's a very good opportunity in one year you can actually find out whether you know you are meant for research or not and if you are meant for research maybe you can pursue that uh further or you could you know just leave out and apply for a job and you know uh, do a job whatever you want right so this is a very very um good uh, opportunity for students who are quite confused right so you don't want to enroll for a phd and you don't want to um you don't uh, you are not familiar with whether you want to go for a job or not right the second thing is field of interest so uh, sometimes what happens right after your masters let's say you again you don't have much experience and you are not sure whether you know um, you you would be good in organic inorganic or physical so you know if you do a one year project let's say you you think organic chemistry is very near to you and you know theoretically you are very good at it so you can do one year practically and i trust me uh, organic chemistry practically and theoretically is, is a way different i have seen 60 to 70% of the students who ha, whose favorite subject in masters was organic chemistry and once they did research in organic chemistry they left organic chemistry altogether they either shifted to physical or inorganic right so organic chemistry involves a lot of labor a lot of bench work uh, long you know lab times right to even 12 to 14 hours sometimes you have to devote so uh, that will give you an idea that whether you know theoretically you like organic chemistry but practically are you uh, able to devote that much time to organic chemistry or not so for those students it could be a good eye opener to know how the research is uh, you know conducted in a practical way right so in case you're not interested then you can shift your subject but in phd you cannot do that right if you enroll let's say in organic under a guide who is an organic chemist then it will be very difficult for you to switch from organic chemistry to physical chemistry i've got many mails regarding this topic so that's why i'm you know telling you that many people who enrolled in organic now want to switch to physical but now their guide is not allowing them to shift to physical because obviously his specialization is organic and he would want you to uh, work in organic chemistry right so it is good for them and in tifr this is one very good thing right when you enroll for a phd position in tifr they give you dedicated 3 months in lab of your choice you can go for three different guides you can work 3 months on in their lab and then decide you know where you like working the best so this is one thing that i uh, saw when i went for the orientation program for uh, tifr uh, in the um, like i had been called for the orientation phd orientation so over there they had discussed all these things that you know once you enroll for the phd you will be given three different um chances in in a span of one year like you can work, work for three and a half months in different in under different guides and see which uh, field do you like so that is one very good thing that TI, tifr is conducting right okay then there are some students who don't want to do a phd from india and somehow you know after their masters either they did not have research articles they did not have any review articles or they did not score well in gre or any any, any other whatever the reason might be they could not get a position abroad right or may, maybe the recommendations of professors were not was not that uh, you know the, the the professors whom you took the recommendation of they were not very well uh, connected to the uh, to the researchers abroad so you, you their recommendation did not carry that much weightage and you want to go abroad so for those students you know for example a project comes up in iits or under some professor who is very well renowned so you can do one year project under him or her and then you know get a recommendation from them and then apply abroad so it is also a lot of students do that you know uh, one of my friends um, he joined iit madras right as a as a project uh, fellow and he worked under that professor for one year and after one year he took his recommendation applied abroad and he he's now in germany right so this is also one thing that generally students tend to do and this is very good for them like if you are sure that you don't want to do a phd from india you want to do it from abroad but unfortunately after your masters you did not get a uh, opportunity then what you could do is you can enroll under a project for one year uh, and you know Uh, just work for one year and then get get the recommendation get the professor's recommendation and ap apply abroad right uh, why you can't do this in phd because generally nowadays lot of institutes you know um they are having kind of like a bond till i think for csi grf still that thing has not come up but many institutes which are offering fellowship uh, they have a bond where they say that if you if you leave the institute then whatever stipend that has been given to you over that period of time you have to return that return that back right so many institutes are doing that so that's why it's um, more beneficial that you um, you know go for a project which is for one year so you can leave after one year and you you, you would not have to return any money as such right but for csi grf i think 
till now also you can leave it any time without returning any money if you don't feel like doing a phd and you have uh, you have and you have basically uh utilize your csr jrf then you don't have to return any money like if you leave after two years also uh, I, i don't think you have to return any money right uh then yeah so research article you know like i was saying if you want to apply abroad uh, maybe the recommendations matter or maybe in that one year you get a research article so research articles also carry a weightage once you are published once you are a published author it matters a lot and then you have a higher chance of getting a phd abroad especially in european countries okay uh then one advantage okay so you might be wondering that you know if if i like that particular project let's say you work in that project for one year and you like that project and you are like okay now i think i want to do a phd in this subject but what if oh, and you might be thinking now i have wasted one year of my time now i have to again enroll for phd so one year of my life has been wasted that's not true because after one year if you decide okay this is something which i like i want to i want to pursue it further you can actually convert that project position to a phd position right it happens in almost all institutes that once you enroll as a phd fellow or so as a project fellow later on you can convert that project into a phd you can you know make the make your thesis around the same project also so you would not waste one year in fact you can later convert your project into a phd right so that is also a possibility which is quite beneficial and then the stipend i told you uh, is quite good and the topics is pre decided that is a big advantage right some students face a lot of um, you know a lot of difficulty in deciding what topic they want to pursue a phd on right they have to do research for one one and a half years they have to go through a lot of literature review to finally decide what topic they want to do a phd on right but project is something which is pre pre decided you know the your guide has already applied he has already thought about the whole project and he knows or he or she knows what they are going to do with that project or how they are going to proceed with that project so that kind of simplifies uh, your role you do not have to think much whatever he or she is telling you you just have to do that right you have to you just follow that path so in some ways it simplifies it i don't like that because i want to decide my own project by myself so i don't like that part path but some students do like that path so for them it's going to be really good right and uh, so your yeah, topic is pre decided one so these are all the advantages now you might be thinking that is if it's such advantages thing why don't every why don't everyone apply for that because it is it, it has some uncertainty right for example when you enroll for a phd you know mostly in most cases once your synopsis happens synopsis when you finally decide your phd topic after you have done your one year of coursework and you finally decide your topic and you give your first research exam that means you are now a permanent phd uh, uh student right and now you'll only leave the institute once you get your phd but that does not happen in project project a lot of power lies with the guide right if your guide decides or if you have some kind of you know some kind of uh, argument with your guide uh, and your guide you know your guide can throw kick you out of the institute anytime he wants right so that is one uncertainty or one disadvantage of a project right then maybe if not with your guide you might have some kind of arguments with some other professors in the institute so they might you know try and uh, uh, try and be a hurdle in your way to get a phd they might not let you convert your project to a phd right they might just bring in some clause that the institute says that so and so students can't you know get a phd after a project or something like that they can create a lot of uh, pro- problems for you right so there's a lot of uncertainty regarding projects that way right that is the only disadvantage i could think of right and the second is like if you want to decide your own topic you would not be able to do that in a project because in a project you will have to work on that particular topic on which the project is based you can't work on your own topic so that these are the two basic dis- disadvantages of a project right now how do you get a project so um if you have a csr jrf generally students generally get a phd directly they don't go for a project so if you have qualified gate right or if you are qualified net ls and you don't have your own fellowship then you can enroll for a um project right so a lot of project positions uh, keep um, keep getting advertised and there's a facebook group called reagent blues over there also i keep posting whatever um project position project positions come across i generally uh, post them on this particular facebook group so you can follow that and uh, recommendations is something that matters the most see gate net ls is second secondary the most that matters is recommendation and now how it works is for example if i am in a lab right and my guide let's say um, gets a project and she tells me or he tells me that you know you should um, Uh, if you have any student in mind who you think uh, would be fit for this project or who you 
personally know please recommend it to me so i'll call my friend or i'll call someone whom i personally know and tell them that you know there's a project position available and you should join over here so obviously since i am already working under my guide so he or she will trust my opinion more than anybody else right so this is how recommendation works it does not happen only in india but everywhere it happens right recommendations matter a lot so if you have a friend who is let's say doing a phd and their guide gets a project right so then you know your friend could recommend your name that there's this friend of mine who wants to do a project under you so you know she he or she might call you for the interview directly right so this is how it goes right generally this is how it goes but yes if you have gate net and you find a position plus you have done some previous experience so let's say the project is based on electrochemistry now you have done some projects or some internships in masters or bachelor's level where you worked you know let's say with uh, cyclic voltammetry you did some kind of electrochemical things right so that previous experience will also matter so the guide will be happy to give you a position because he knows that he would not have to teach you a lot because you have already done all these instruments or you've already worked in the field of electrochemistry so that also matters so these are the three things which basically matter recommendations top the list then if you have a gate net ls it matters but recommendations and previous experience in that field is something which counts the most right so i hope you got a, a good glimpse or a good overview of what you need to do how a project works and what are the differences between a project and phd and what are the basic bigger advantages of uh, a project a project fellow right so these are certain advantages and i hope you found this video useful if you did please like this video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that right thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video